Anyone can make something move on a website, but few designers know how to make emotion feel intentional, a seamless part of the experience. That's what separates forgettable websites from ones that feel crafted and ultimately will let you charge more for your work. But animation is everywhere now. Every site is overloaded with movement, and a lot of it does nothing but distract. So the question is, how do you use motion in a way that actually adds value? Animation has become one of the easiest things to add to a website. Tools like Framer, Spline, Lottie, Rive, they all make it so simple. So the real skill isn't adding motion and fancy interactions. In my opinion, the real skill is actually knowing why it should be there, how to make it add meaning, and practicing restraint. My name is Matt Jumper, and if you ever felt like a site was beautiful, but maybe just too much, you're not alone. Let's fix that. So let's start from the top and ask a question that I feel like no one actually asks. Why use motion in the first place? These four answers should help guide you as to when you should actually consider adding animation. The first is to create a more engaging, memorable experience. And this is probably what most people use animation for. Honestly, it's a totally fair reason. Having well-executed animations can easily keep people more engaged and leave a lasting positive impression of your brand. And that can easily translate into a metric like conversion, signups, or retention, but also metrics that maybe aren't so tangible. But because it's such a vague catch-all reason, it's important to practice restraint here and not use this as a crutch as a justification for any animation under the sun. But at the same time, it creates a more memorable or joyful experience, should be a valid argument to make the internet a more fun place to be. The second is to elevate perceived quality. When animation is done right and it feels smooth, cohesive, and intentional, it reads as craftsmanship. It signals that you actually care about your brand and your products, and this care can turn into trust. Of course, that trust isn't just built in animation, it's the full experience, design, copy, product, etc. But motion is simply another way to prove that you take your brand seriously. Next is to help communicate. Animation is an incredible communication tool that can make all the difference compared to static layouts. This is a more tangible reason that's easier to justify and measure. Sometimes scroll tracking animations can tell your story better than static graphics or words. For many companies, animated demos are the best mediums to explain their product or bring some tangibility to abstract ideas, benefits, or features. For your e-commerce site, displaying your product in an interactive 3D environment might be the most effective way to showcase it. There are infinite ways to communicate infinite ideas, and animations can often make it significantly easier and more impactful. And last but not least, animations can be a strong format to guide and persuade. Motion can direct the eye and connect sections together, drawing the user down the site, enticing you to scroll or lead you to the section you should interact with next. When used well, it keeps users oriented without them consciously being aware of it. This could come to life through scroll animations or something as simple as a button. A beautifully executed animated hover state could naturally do a better job compelling a user to click on it than, say, a simple color change. Love or hate liquid glass? Tell me you don't want to click on this button. And when you give feedback to the user in real time using motion, done with intention to detail, it brings a human element to your site along with a level of polish that is hard to ignore. Now let's get into the three core principles that are dead simple and drive every effective animation decision. Follow them and your motion will always serve a clear purpose, stay on brand, and help users not distract them. So the first principle is purpose. Every animation should serve one of the whys we just went over. And if you can't define what it's actually adding, whether it be tangible or not, it's likely unnecessary noise. If you can remove it for a day and not miss it, it probably shouldn't come back. The second is brand expression. So I like to think of motion as the brand's body language if we're a person. It communicates personality in a way that color, typography, or other static brand elements just can't. Every animation decision should reflect your brand perfectly. For example, a playful brand might move with balance and energy, while a tech brand might feel more snappy and precise. It's important to explore and define how your brand moves so you can be both intentional and cohesive. And on that note, the last principle is cohesion. A unified motion language isn't something that people always notice when it's there, but they definitely do when it's not. As a general guide, try to use similar timing, easing, and direction throughout your site so everything feels connected. Not that everything needs to be consistent and repeated, it just needs to feel like every animation works well with one another. All is intentional and creates a harmonious environment. To make it easier for yourself, try to limit the number of types of animations on your site. Beyond just doing the opposite of what I just went over, there are a few common mistakes I see all the time, but all of them come down to one thing just doing too much. Every element fades in, this is way too distracting. On a positive note, look at Ramp's website. I don't see a single appear animation, but all the animations are limited to the feature graphics and the site is beautiful. Too many things moving at once, definitely overwhelming. Look at the bento grid on Reducto. There's one continually moving box and the rest only animate on hover. Your scroll effects for the sake of it, may be impressive to other designers, but just slows down most people. Look at the Hymns website. Quite a few scroll animations that are strictly aesthetic but they're used sparingly and don't prevent me from scrolling or reading any content. Fake preloaders? No thank you. Unless it's actually preloading something or is quick enough to keep my attention before I can actually close the tab, like this one. So where's animation going and how can you actually sell yourself in this world? As I said before, we have so many tools now that help us make anything instantly, including animation. 
So when we're talking about animation, the value that you provide as a designer isn't isolated to learning the tool and being able to animate cool shit. Anyone can learn to do that. If you're trying to sell a long animated storytelling website, sell your ability to tell a story. If you're trying to sell that you can use animation to make the best possible site for your customer, sell that you understand how to make a successful website and how animations can fit into that plan. Or show you know how to make elegant sites that have animation that bring a brand to life and aren't just flashy for no reason. A few years ago, sites like Amy were all about these long scroll-based storytelling animations with some pretty crazy effects. Amy recently pulled a 180 and has returned to simplicity with a minimal design and extremely clear messaging. Both are beautiful, but it's important to know which direction fits the brand's goals and how to use animation and motion accordingly. Ultimately, motion is the design decision. And like every good design decision, it should be rooted in some sort of insider goal, whether that to be communicate an idea, make people trust your brand, or just bring some moments of delight to the internet. But these days, for me, a delightful website is usually one that loads fast, feels effortless, and has elegant, subtle animations that just don't get in the way.